from Cobra in East Sussex, Knight Rider. Looks stealthy, but things can go bump in the night. Now, Knight Rider, see, I believe your weapon is a first for Robot Wars. Tell me about yes, it. Yes, yeah, we believe it's a first. Um, it's a disemboweler. Nice. Um, basically, what we hope to do is ram the opposition with the spike, and right, yeah. once, once it's actually, hopefully, if we penetrate the armour of the other side, we can then activate a motor which spins this. These shards will come out and hopefully rip the guts of the other robots apart and we can pull it out with the spike when we withdraw. Lovely, yes. Yep. Well, robots were never known for their charm. Devastating active spike weapon, then two 750-watt electric motor, ultra-low centre of gravity, six-wheel driven, loss in shape, designed to run both ways up. Let's have a look at the teams then. First, Mr. Nasty, Perry, Dan and Jack Watkins on the left. Andy Bannerman, and Carl Warren and Andrew Newby with Maximus. And Knight Rider, Paul Burridge, Stephen Oakley and Liz Stevens. In the arena for the House Robots, Matilda. With a new toughened tusk. Need any toughening up, Sir Killalot. Three, two, one, two, eight. Green for go then. One robot will fall at this stage. Very tentative. Mr. Nasty there, gleaming, steely, in on Maximus and pushing back to the arena sidewalk. That was determined. Well, they need to do a little bit more of a, a roaming around the arena. A roaming? A ro yeah, OK. Maximus in a little bit of trouble. So will I be with puns like that. Mr. Nasty on the attack, straight onto the angle grinder and over the flame pit. The pit release has been activated. I don't think there's going to be much empire building from the Maximus Gladiator team, do you? The ref bot, a little shove. Mr. Nasty watches on. We've seen nothing of Knight Rider just at the top of your picture there. Ooh, he needs to avoid Sir Killalot's chomp and get away, but caught Knight Rider. Now, the question, who's fallen first? Maximus still active. We can see the flipper moving very, very slowly. But the ref bot making sure and turning away. So is Maximus still OK? And now goes to look at Knight Rider. We learnt all about their gory weaponry, but it's Knight Rider, I think, to fall first. Maximus proved they were still working. Mr. Nasty, we know, are OK. And Knight Rider have gone. Well, that's a surprise to me. They had a very horrible looking weapon, but they didn't get a chance to use it. And Paul Burridge, Stephen Oakley, and Liz Stevens, their dream ends right there. Buckled bent and a broken dream. Thrown into the air, <laughs> off the back of Matilda. She never forgets those she has given a piggyback to. And in she comes. At the controls, Stephen Oakley driving the machine. Paul Burridge is at the weaponry. We never saw it, did we? Oh! Well, we see a little glimpse there, but in the claws of Sir Killalot. Just got a little glimpse of Mr. Nasty. I thought Mr. Nasty looked quite good early on. Knight Rider didn't at all. The ultimate winner of the New Blood Championship goes straight into the seventh UK Domestic Series. <laughs> Sir Killalot, fancy down and showboating, nearly went over. <laughs> and moves away. Smiles all round. Maximus looked apart. Splendid accoutrements, the armour on the side, the horns, if you like, the spikes, but... Uh, well, what state will they be in, Maximus, when they continue? Because they're through to round two. It was Knight Rider in the middle of your picture there, counted out the first. Ha-ha! <laughs> Drop zone time! Go on! Four! Two. You're on TV! Oh, I'll tell you what, Owens Matilda comes in. We didn't really like that programme, so he spikes it from the drop zone. Came the TV. 
And the replays. In comes Matilda. Oh, look at that. She obviously thinks there's too many replays on TV. Didn't like the repeat. Cut it out. How can they applaud after all that? Knight Rider gone. Oh, that was splendid. Knight Rider. They were immobilised first. So, Maximus and Mr Nasty, they go marching on. Well, uh, significant amounts of damage. In with damage cam there. What happened to the weapon? The first time disemboweler. It's good for catching television. <laughs> yeah. Is that what you reckon? You're going to get BBC Two on it, are you? We will now, yeah. yeah. I don't think you will. It didn't <laughs> disembowel anything, did it? Uh... In fact, ironically, you yourselves <laughs> seem to be disemboweled. Sorry? <laughs> Do you have any comment to make at all in your defence? Yeah, we lost drive. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> on one you side. You lost your minds going in there with that thing. Ah, it's all fun, isn't it? You enjoyed it? Yeah. Good, so did we. Thank yeah, you made very us laugh much. As well. It was great fun. We laughed a lot out here. <laughs> <laughs> From Barnoldswick in Lancashire, Night Raider. As a mighty flipper is stealthy under cover of darkness in the tool shed, but what happens in a floodlit arena? Chaos 2 or the Big Flipper's Bigger Brother, you yeah. know, maybe. You know, you're, you're, you're new to Robot yeah, Wars, but new. does it compare to them? Not quite as good as them, I don't think, really. Okay, no. so you've got a little way to go yeah. in the evolution we have. process. Yeah, we have, we have. Yeah. Best of luck. Thanks very much. I hope you get a chance at the evolution process. So do we. <laughs> so <laughs> do we. Yeah, yeah. very quickly. <laughs> Strong with powerful weaponry at both front and back, a 200 kilo hoisting flipper and titanium spikes. It's fast enough to get out of any situation with top speeds of 18 miles an hour. Roboteers, stand by. Let's have a look at the teams. Hell's Teeth there on the left, captained by Shane Swan. Knight Raider on the right with George Tal captaining. And there the Thor team, Jason Marston and Lee Cornish. In the arena for the house robots, Mr. Psycho. And Sir Killer. Oh, the two heavyweight giants. Two robots survive this opening melee to march on. It looks tentative. Then down comes Thor's mighty hammer. Huge and powerful. Cracking down, looking to puncture Night Raider, but actually missing at the moment. Night Raider's got in too close to Thor. Now that's an interesting tactic, and I wonder whether or not Jason Marston and Lee Cornish will have learned from that. Just stay away a little bit from the opponents. Yep, I think they're trying to give themselves enough room to get the full power of the hammer down. Meanwhile, Hell's Teeth is in a little bit of trouble, getting quickly away there from the house robots. Has Thor's hammer taken too much energy out of the machine? Knight Raider is pushing and shoving. Knight Raider, 100 kilos. Level weight with Thor. To me, that hammer is getting weaker and weaker. Or is it? It's not causing too much damage, though, is it? Hell's Teeth. Oh! Just nipping around, and down comes the hammer of Mr. Psycho on Knight Raider. And interestingly, Knight Raider's armor plating is withstanding the punishment, is it? At the moment, it certainly looks to me as if it's okay. It's very heavily armored, Knight Raider. Mr. Psycho's gonna have another angle of attack. Get out of there, Knight Raider. It's still mobile and still trying to flip as well, Knight Raider. So the ref one doesn't have to come in unless he wants to show some mercy, because Knight Raider is bearing the brunt here of the attack. George Tull, Trevor Holden and Nick Blackman, the Knight Raider team. Oh, their ball machine can't have much life left in it. After sustained attack by Mr. Psycho, Sir Killalock comes across. Hell's Teeth and Thor still moving. Hell's Teeth trying to get the rear, spinning this weapon into play. Poor old Knight Raider. Horrible punishment. They bravely tried to flip and keep moving. But in the end, Mr. Psycho did for them. And the ref bot comes in and between Killalock and Mr. Psycho, Knight Raider are between a rock and a hard place and they're out. Thor and Hellseed fight off. Thor pushes into the pit release. 
And we remind you that both these two surviving robots will fight on in round two of heat two of the New Blood Championship. There they are locked together. And there's Knight Raider in the horrible grip of Mr. Cycle. Don't get Mr. Cycle on that spinning disc on the arena floor. Heaven knows what might happen. He could end up back there in row L. Ooh, what a grisly thought. Not really, I was only joking. Down it comes. Oh, for safety, you know. Uh, there it is, Knight Raider, about to be floor flipped. Or smashed. Oh, please, put it out of its misery. It did so well. These are newcomers to Robot Wars, to the carnage. Now they know what to expect if they come back. If there's anything to bring back. Flipped. Bounces and crashes. And hits Mr. Psycho. We're having a laugh. Oh, jeez. I'll be crying. Good sports. Well, they'll play no further part. Night Raider. Absolutely battered. Thor and Hell's Teeth. They go marching on. OK, a verb is a doing word. Yes. And just about every verb applied. It certainly did, didn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. Done to a turn. So pinched, bashed, crashed, yep. squashed, Absolutely. crushed. Thrown. All of them thrown, <laughs> flipped. I mean, it was stupendous. Can you just take that this, side panel off this. for me? We're, I've got damage cam here. And, uh, oh, oh. <laughs> Pull out the, there's some more down there. Yeah, yeah, there's another little piece yeah. down here as well. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of bits yeah, there's there. There's lots of bits all over the show. Now, I presume you enjoyed that. We certainly did. <laughs> yeah, it, was, <laughs> it was superb. It was really enjoyable. We absolutely loved it. That's good. That's it's amazing. so much nicer when I know I don't have to hand out the tissues at the end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, thank you very much. You're quite Top welcome. class entertainment. Can you come back with another one we next time? Will. Great. We'll will. smash that one up for you as well. <laughs> thank you very much. That's Cheers. very nice of you. <laughs> RT81. A walking robot so allowed more weight. Intriguing this one. Now I'm curious, why make RT81 a walker? Because of the uh, weight limit, we're allowed 200 kilos, so obviously it's a big advantage. So and that seduced you? Yeah, that's it. And uh, it gives us means we can have bigger weapons, so. Who are you going for first with this remarkable weapon? Uh, we'll mostly go for the spinning disc. And leave the uh, leave the flipper till last. Well, between us, yeah. they're really frightened of you. <laughs> 190 kilos. The centre stand turns 360 degrees. The separate top turret also turns. It has an electric-driven hammer. It's surrounded by a lorry rear tire for protection, but slow. Roboteers, stand by. Let's have a look at the teams. Ed Chubb there on the left, captain by Stephen Edgerton, chip captain by Rob Jones. And RT81, Andrew Lovelace is the skipper there. And in the arena, we have Sir Killalot with the lance and claw. And we have the horrible Mr. Psycho. Three, two, one. Two RT81 can only get up to two miles an hour, so don't expect Grand Prix speeds. Edgehog turning quickly against Chip. <laughs> I love the walkers. Very steady and thoughtful. Down comes its mighty hammer. Electric driven, we'll wait and see. Up against Mr. Psycho's hammer. I know, I know which one I'd pick. Anyway, back to the arena centre. Chip and Edgehog. Edgehog, I think, trying to get broadside so it can get its axe down with deadly effect onto the chip team of Rob Jones. Young Gareth, who's nine, and Tom Ross out there. Chip away, Edgehog spinning. The pit release has been signalled. We haven't seen Chip's deadly spinning disc. Ten times more destructive than it, no this. We'll wait and see. RT81 pushed out into the arena centre. Give it a chance to get out there amongst the melee, otherwise it would have taken until the year 2086. RT81 still battling hard. There you can see the intriguing turret turn. The tyre has offered protection to the mechanics. There you can see the axe of Edgehog has caused no real problem. It has impaled itself onto RT81, but it's not doing any real damage. 
And in fact, it's being turned by RT81 and being dragged Edgehog there. Needs to get away. Oh, Mr. Psycho gives it a helpful blow. Just caught a glimpse of Andrew Lovelace there in the quartered gold and black shirt of the RT81 colours. There he is again with Callum Collins in there with him. Edgehog trying to spin away and get another... Oh! Attacking on RT81, that's not going to happen now. Mr. Psycho's great hammer came down and Edgehog withstood the blow. Maddened, look, doesn't know where he's aiming its own blows from its axe. Oh! Took one on the chin there, Mr. Psycho. Doesn't look very happy, he's after you. Six foot two and eyes of... Well, not blue, but anyway, he's coming after you. Edgehog pushed against the arena sidewall. What's up there, Edgehog? Spinning around like a Madden thing. Crowd love it. Pit, 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 they cry. Killalot's not going to go down there, surely. He's closing in on Edgehog. Poor old Edgehog did all the work in this for me. And the house robots hate him for it. And the flag of St George would only left in tatters, I think. Well, you have to learn in new blood. Certainly worthy, brave. But naive tactics being used, that's what the New Blood Championships are all about, to try and find <laughs> great robots for the future. What's he doing attacking the arena sidewall there? RT81, what are you doing in there as well? Well, they're learning lessons fast. I'm not too sure whether RT81 is manoeuvrable or mobile. The ref bot thinks not. He's counting them down. RT81 will be the first to... Fall! Edgehog and Chip survive and go on. The walker walks no more. What will be left of Callum Collins' RT81? Because there's someone who can damage the tyre and get to the innards. Mr Psycho, he has a go. His pal Sir Killalot comes in. Ah, trying the weaponry. Fashion from the jaws of life, let me remind you used by the rescue services around the world to cut people free from wreckage. We've uh, modified them slightly. Oh, to cause mayhem. RT81 gets a hammer blow. Still standing. You see, they can use this as the basis for a robot to come back and have another go in the future if they're, um, if they're uh, daft enough, really. In the arena centre. Ah, oh, now that's what we call the drop zone. Why? You'll find out. That's a common cardinal kitchen cooker. We've strung it up to bring it down. Ooh, RT81 still standing tall, but as far as the competition goes, it takes the fall. RT81 gets a right good cooking. Edgehog and Mr Chip, they go through. Where did it start going wrong? Well, we didn't design it to have uh, an oven dropped on it, basically. <laughs> <laughs> but that no. was the end of a long road of it? destruction. There it is, look. Oh. Show me inside the real problem. The problem that meant you, that was it, you were lost. Once the actual hammer had fired, it actually shorted out the commentator, which has caused fire inside it, shorting out batteries. One last word from you. Do you think you could have done any better? Mm, no, not really. What was it like having an oven dropped on your robot? Um, very painful. <laughs> From Romford in Essex, Mad Dogs. An Englishman come into the arena fun. Now, when you say Mad Dog has a powerful flipper, compare it to something for me. Chaos 2 is rated at at least a thousand pounds. We've got about fourteen hundred pounds of lift. What have you been practicing on? Uh, we've been practicing on a V8 engine block which weighs about 100 kilos. Right, and how far can you flip that? Uh, it goes about three foot in the air and about five or six feet forwards. That'll do for me. The others will be nervous then. Very powerful flipper, looks mean, two-wheel driven, has a steel backbone chassis, heat-treated aluminium and polycarbonate shell, but it does lack experience, don't they all? Roboteers, stand by. Have a look at the teams on the left. I see you, the captain Nick Richard, on the right chopper, the captain Ian Bennett. And there, the Mad Dog team Chris Isaacs and Roger Partridge. 
Matilda's in the arena for the house robots with the blinking eyes, the tusks and the friend in Sir Killalot. Three, two, one, two. Great pace about this show. This is going to be special, I think. Mad Dog looks mean. ICU goes a hunting. It doesn't miss anything, they say. The chopper blades begin to whirl. A chopper presumably after a helicopter. Mad Dog turns away. Is it hungry? Is it mean? Or is it the Mad Dog? A bit of a puppy out there. Chopper has run straight into Matilda's spinning rear flywheel. And a bit of the chopper blade came off, and another bit is bent and buckled, and that's the chopper weaponry finish. And look at the side armor ripped apart there by Matilda. Bang! Off it flew, the armament. The chopper, then the blade was buckled. And Chopper is in real trouble, grounded, I would suggest. Oh, dear, have a look at that. Meanwhile, ICU pushed by Sir Killalot onto Mad Dog. Mad Dog onto the arena grinder, gets away, spins away. Killalot's on the brow. Mad Dog shunted into the CPZ, the corner patrol zone, tries to get away by... Yeah, right, flipping Sir Killalot. Chopper's on the flame pit. Well, Chopper came out, I think, with, with the one plan in mind. Let's just get Mullard. Let's get absolutely massacred. Let's do our very, very worst. Ian Bennett, Guy Gibson and Tom Gibson out there. 13-year-old Tom Burn, baby Burn, and they are doing just that. The Red Bot's out there, has a flame extinguisher, should it be needed. A shake of the head. <laughs> Chopper, that's brilliant. They are all novices to Robot Wars. We shouldn't be too unkind, but they were... Uh, Useless. I see you there in the jaws of Mad Dog. <laughs> Chopper in the background. What are they trying to do? Splendid bravery by all these teams. Chopper. <laughs> Let's take on the angle grinder, shall we now? Because <laughs> we've been beaten by just about everything else. Mad Dog, to me, has done nothing, to be honest. ICU, of all of them, has looked the most impressive. Poor old Chopper was brave, at least. ICU has pressed the pit release. Oh, goodness me, I thought they were going to back straight down into that pit release. They've had some fun out there, the teams, haven't they? The Mad Dog team needs to impress me more. The Red Bot is counting them down and out. So will Chopper survive? I hope so, because I think Mad Dog have been rendered immobile and the Red Bot is counting down and out. Mad Dog, Mad Dog, they go, and I see you and Chopper survive. What can Chopper do after this? Very little, I would imagine, but Mad Dog didn't do anything. Look at that great hole torn out. So I wonder if that was King. Ah! Oh, oh, oh! Sir Killalot. Will it just crunch off the Mad Dog lifting device? Sir Killalot has them. Onto the floor, flip up. You may have seen a hot dog. How about a flying dog? Ooh, Matilda won't be very happy. Say pardon. Mad dog through the air. Hit Matilda fair and square on the bottom. It wasn't a playful pat. And Sir Killalot goes after the dog. The Z team, they call themselves, from Essex, the Mad Dog Boys, Chris Isaacs and Roger Partridge. He at the weapons control, Chris was driving. Oh, they're in the drop zone. A dustbin full of bowling balls, golf balls, and lots of little, little, little ping pong balls as well. But they can all create damage. The bowling ball slammed down and bounced away. I think they missed. The Mad Dog. Maybe gave them an evil glare. But that's a killer lot's breastplate out there. What on earth is that doing out there in the centre of the arena? Came off in the battle somewhere. Mad Dog can't take any credit, I don't think. ICU still fighting. Chopper still doing something. I won't call it fighting. And Mad Dog says goodbye to the New Blood Championship. Six. Another day. Right, Mad 
dog. It's a little bit of damage there. We expected rabid. What we got was simpering. I shall come round the front <laughs> with damage cam. Is there anything left in there? Is this bit? Oh, yes. Yes. Um, what else? It doesn't look too badly damaged inside. It's no. just, the, just, the, <laughs> just the externals. Yeah. So why did you stop working then? The removable link that um, keeps the electrics powered fell off. You lost? Yes, When did. When the chopper kept going despite all that had <laughs> happened to it, you must be so embarrassed. Um, so ashamed. I've, and if you're not, I'm going to make you feel so embarrassed and so ashamed. I've had a lot of practice of being embarrassed, so I'm have all right. Have you? Yeah. Have you? Has it been a sad and hard life? I'm afraid it has, yes. Yeah. And it, it, does, it doesn't get any easier. No, it's not got any better at all, has no, it? Never you're mind. going to take this home now. Um, well, maybe. maybe. <laughs> <laughs> From Hounsworth, Birmingham in the West Midlands, direct action. Oh, uh, yeah, but ultimate satisfaction. Now, I'm slightly suspicious, I have to say, of this robot, because you've done paint effects everywhere. Paint effects on the remote, paint effects on the hat. There are even paint effects on their toolboxes. Don't think I haven't noticed. Ah, uh, it's always. Have you been so busy painting that you've forgotten about the technology? No, not necessarily. It's always been noticed. That's the main thing. We thought it would stand out a bit. Well, you certainly stand out a bit. Now, how fast does this go? How mean can it be against the thresher? Other <laughs> I call it the thresher, otherwise known as revolution. Well, basically, before, we've done a telegas bus on a 60, uh, 60 miles per hour. We've doubled the speed of it now. We haven't tested it out, but we believe it should do a bit of damage. What? Right, OK. And how about your other opposition? A bit worried about that, it looks a very tough robot. Right. So a bit worried. How thick your armour? Well, it's six nylon. Mil yeah, 6 mil nylon. Yeah. OK, bye then. <laughs> the 25 kilo flywheel disc weapon has bolt cutter blades spinning at 850 RPM, but the back end has nothing to defend itself at all. Roboteers, stand by. Let's have a look at the teams then. Revolution 2 on the left, captain by Roger Webb. Storm 2, captain by Ed Hop hitting the black. Direct action, Ian Short and Jason Bromhead and Francis Tomlin. In the arena for the house robots, Mr Psycho. And his great partner, Sir Killalot. Three, two, one. Out they scuttle then. Storm 2 quickly onto the attack. In underneath, direct action. Only four millimetres of ground clearance direct action, but under pressure straight away, that full thrust of Storm 2, and under the watchful eye and the grisly eye of Mr Psycho, get out of there, direct action. As I said before, this is no game of chess or checkers. This is Robot Wars, and this is the war zone. In comes the flaming weaponry of Revolution 2. Storm 2, we were laughing at its... Lack of weaponry, but I'll tell you what, it's shifting in that arena. You see the Revolution 2 blades are flailing madly, but doing what? Direct action has the front flywheel, a horizontal weapon. Get out from underneath the hammer blow of Mr. Psycho. Whoa, look at the speed of Storm 2. Up to 20 miles an hour, I like this little thing backing under the attack of Revolution 2 again. Storm 2 away. Revolution 2 has seen the Team there, Roger Webb and Gordon Anderson. Direct action, punishment from Storm 2. Direct action, sluggish to turn as well. Has a zero turning circle, direct action, but it is sluggish. And Storm 2 is one of the fastest things I've seen about the arena in a long time. And even the hammer blow of Mr. Psycho just seemed to glance away. I like Storm 2, I can tell you. Lots of honest industry back on the attack again, trying to get in underneath direct action. Ian Shorten and Jason and Francis in that direct action team. Don't know what to do, look at that. What a shove here. Very Tornado-esque in its approach, Storm 2. Tornado, a very famous robot in the history of the killing zone. In underneath direct action, full of persistence, Storm 2, and pace as well. And aggression, Revolution 2 has a lot of finery about the design, great creativity, but I, I was never too sure about its effectiveness. For me, Storm 2 will go through here, but who will fall? Direct action or Revolution 2? Direct action, off that early onslaught, has stayed in there very well. I'm not too sure whether it's got great traction on the arena floor. There's the pit release button activated, so they played their last gambit 
the chessboard machine that is direct action. And they're going to try and get Revolution 2 down there, or maybe hope that Storm 2 will drive itself insanely into the pit. I can't see that happening. Don't forget, the ultimate winners of this New Blood Championship will gain direct entry into the seventh wars, the UK Championships. Direct action. Oh! On the brink of oblivion and now going down. But for a moment, I thought Storm 2 were the fall, but it is direct action. Good go. Toppled into the pit. Storm 2 and Revolution 2. They go whirling on. Well, that's what you get for being so square. Yes, I'm afraid so. It took me ages to think up that. Oh, I can imagine. You've barely even laughed at it. Now, look, you've lost your teeth. Yes. There. Is that all uh, the way around? I've lost it at the beginning Sorry. of the fight, I'm afraid. Look. And there's one all the way around uh, there, uh, yes. Uh, and we lost that later on. That one's gone as well. Yes. So what do you think was the defining moment that meant you'd lost? Apart uh, from obviously going into the pitch. Traction as well, losing the blades, and we're slipping around a hell of a lot. So took, but right from before. the beginning, it wasn't very nice. So right no, in the beginning, you suddenly up. found yourself in that corner. That was a problem, yes. We a big <laughs> robot in a corner with a big hammer. A problem. robot probably ten times the that's size of like it, a but a very big hammer, yes, that's which you only just about that. managed to avoid. Just very, very close. Did, did you enjoy it? Yes, it was nice of you. Well, then you we're absolutely are as mad as you seem well, to be. Well, I hope so. <laughs> Brentford in Middlesex, Bash Gordon. The fastest thing in New Blood. So, this is Bash Gordon. Now, you've got two weapons in one here. You've got the axe. That's right. You'll see there. I don't understand how does the flipper work because the axe must stop it getting to the floor. Well, the idea is that this swings all the way over to the back of the robot. And when it's on the other side, it's actually very close to the floor. So, the idea is we just drive under someone and flip. So, the other side's a flipper and this side's an axe. That's right. Yeah. Now, how are you going to keep track of that when you're in the arena? Uh, with great difficulty, probably, <laughs> but uh, we'll give it our best shot. Very quick at 25 miles an hour, there's nothing faster. Good manoeuvrability, a strong chassis, the powerful weaponry, but the design is untested and reliability is questionable. Roboteers, stand by. Here are the teams then. Bash Gordon on the left, captain by Tony Vincent, Cedric Slammer on the right, captain by Jason Alty. And the pressure team, Mike Hamilton, Macy, son Adam, daughter Charlotte. There in the arena for the house robots, Mr. Psycho and Shunt. Three, two, one. Two, two robots survived this opening melee to fight on in the fourth and final heat of the New Blood Championship. Immediately, Bash Gordon trying to run up to pace to take on Cedric Slammer, turning away, dodging. Good manoeuvrability, pressure slow to get going, driving there. Here's uh, young Charlotte, who's 12 years of age. There we can see the Bash Gordon team with the mighty axe down. Has that flipper as well. I'm not too sure how that works. Are you? Cedric Slammer with the sort of spinning car wheel blades onto the side of Bash Gordon. And all ready, ripping into the chassis and the armament. We thought the design untested might be unreliable. It's about to take on Mr. Psycho, surely not, but that's good driving. Pressing there, the pit release. Will one of the others get caught? Cedric Slammer, all pressure. The Slammer taking on pressure, which hasn't done too much, to be honest. One of the side panels seems to be coming away. Bash Gordon perilously close to the pit. Cedric Slammer doing all the good work here. Watch out for that little bit later on. Bash Gordon, where are you going? Pressure. Can you hold on to those side panels which sort of double up as weaponry as well? And Bash Gordon seems to want to take an exit route out of these championships. Where are they going? They're going down in the pit. If, if, that is, Cedric Slammer can get them down there. Yes, they can. Bash Gordon have gone. Tony Vincent side out. Charlotte and pressure through. Bash Gordon commits suicide. Cedric Slammer and pressure, they live on. Stop right there, Bash Gordon. Look, we can see inside with the aid of damage cam. There's, the chain is on the floor. It should be round the cog. That was your first problem. Exactly, yes, yes. I think when we hit the sidewall, the force was so great that it just ripped the chain off the cog. Okay. Bit of a redesign needed, I think. And yet, your second problem was the big hole in 
the floor of the arena. Yeah, because I lost drive, I couldn't control where it was going, so it was inevitable, really. Yeah. You yeah. didn't get much chance to use that weapon either. No, no, unfortunately not, because that happened so early. Yeah. yeah. Did you enjoy it? Oh, it's great laugh. Oh, yeah. good. Yeah. That's the most important thing. Okay. Thank you very much, Bash Gordon team. Thank you very much. From Queensland in Australia, Bondi Titch. Will this serve to Robot Wars glory? This person has come the furthest that any person has ever come to be in Robot Wars. Where have you come from? Brisbane. Australia. Yeah. Tell me about your robot. You've got a very big hammer. A very big hammer. So do you think it can smash the likes of Firestorm? Hopefully. Between you and me, and I'm only saying this because you come a long way, the corkscrew team have a tendency to throw themselves in the pit if the pit is open. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Wedge shaped with a polycarbonate shell and CO2 powered hammer, very manoeuvrable on two 750 watt motors, top speeds of 12 miles an hour, but very inexperienced. Roboteers, stand by. To the teams then, Weldon Northern Ireland on the left, Fellim and David Lundy, Bondi Titch on the right, Matthew and Linda Jennings from Australia. And there on the left, the corkscrew Heatley family from Scotland and Firestorm Graham and Hazel from England in the arena for the house robots, Mr. Psycho and Matilda. Tusks. Crucible. Three, two, one. Two. They get two machines go through to the second round. Very quickly off the mark was Firestorm. Again, slamming into Weldor from Northern Ireland, self-riding spectacularly. Corkscrew turning, body view picture. Over goes Weldor again. Can they self-right once more? Fenham and David Lundy from Northern Ireland. Good day. Will it be for the Bondi Titch Australian team? I think Weldor is done for. They can't surf right this time. You're seeing there the firestorm combination of Graham Bone and Hazel Heslock. Very powerful. Once again into the CPZ. Weldor taking a heck of a buffeting. Can they get it up and over? They can. Weldor has gone. Northern Ireland out of the competition. The Commonwealth Carnage. Bondi Titch still in there. Now, can they press the pit release? They can. Helped out by Firestorm. Once again, Firestorm very, very strong. Hugely experienced in the Robot Wars war zone. Bondi Titch, down comes the big hammer. Let's hope those skirts don't come down in the corkscrew control box. Are oh, they going to spin their way into oblivion again? Very close to going down that pit. The history in Robot Wars has been dogged by that sort of problem. Oh! The great power as they attack Bondi Titch and off came a side panel. Look at this. Court screws, revolving blades, tearing off a side panel there of Bondi Titch, flying away. Now we have the exposed innards. Had Firestorm 4 had an axe on board, Bondi Titch would have been finished there, but they have the flip up. The Australians surfing their way out of the competition, it would seem. A little kangaroo hop is all that's needed. Oh, into the corner they go, and I'll tell you, they're not waltzing Matilda at the moment with anyone. Firestorm 4 means a dance of death with Bondi Titch. They're in the corner, they need to get out very quickly. OK, so the hammer's got movement, but I don't think the machine is ever again going to get up to 12 mile an hour. Top speeds to you, Mr. Psycho comes in. Battle of the hammers. Ha! There's no match. Hammer? That's a hammer on Mr. Psycho. Oh, but good pace of hours. Ron Bondatich is still moving. Firestorm 4 behind, though. Flips. Not seen a lot of court screw in the last couple of minutes. Down comes a hammer from what Mr. Psycho. Little Matthew Jennings looks concerned, and they're out. Flipped and out by Firestorm 4. Spectacular, the English hope, the Australian and Northern Ireland dreams in tatters. There's Corkscrew, surviving to fight on. They've made the second round, and now they're taking on Matilda. Massive power in those blades. Look at the damage caused to Matilda. They've hardly made a silk purse out of a sow's ear. In the same control box, look, and going through Corkscrew and Firestorm. Out, though, Bondi Titch and the Weldor team from Northern Ireland. a mock. It's bye-bye to the boys from Bondi. The Northern Irish get their fingers burned. Corks through the Scots and Firestorm the English. They go through!
from Brisbane in Australia to face and take on Mr. Psycho. How does it feel? Very weird. Was it more difficult than you thought? Yeah. Were you scared? <laughs> but you got battle scars from Matilda. You did very well for Australia, so you should be very proud. Yeah? Yeah. Congratulations and thank you very much for coming all that way. From Brisco in Italy, Zeus. A robot wars god or a robot wars dud? So, ciao. Hello, Zeus Hello. team. Uh, lots of spaghetti in there. That's because this is the Italian team. That's terrible, isn't it? Now, how do you feel about fighting Black Hole? He's uh, a good opponent, but uh, I will destroy him with my flipper. Uh -huh. yes, and I will put them out of the arena. Oh, good. Fantastic. Thank you. Aluminium with polycarbonate protection and the CO2 flipper. It still works if it's turned over, by the way. Has pushing power, good armour, compact and resistant, but inexperienced. Roboteers, stand by. The two teams then, Massimiliano Calvani and Gerardo Alberti of Zeus in Italy. And Black Hole, Jorg and Marcus Marshall and Manfred Rachner. You heard him speaking there on the right. In the arena for the house robots is Mr Psycho. And also, dead metal. Three, two, one. Italy against Germany. Zeus there, moving forward. Something came flying off. What on earth was that? Something's come flying off again. Zeus in real trouble here. Black Hole looks formidable coming forward. The German mean machine, 14-year-old Marcus Marshall driving his dad, Jorg, looking on. Zeus trying to right themselves. What happened to your plan, Massimiliano, to drive Black Hole out of the arena? It's not going to work. They're in real trouble there. Gerardo looking on. Zeus lifted up. He's got a two-centimetre ground clearance. 95 kilos flipped effortlessly into the air by Black Hole. This is some weapon they've got, you know. Black Hole could be a very strong contender for this Euro title. Zeus turned on its side. Well, we were led to believe the flipper would still work. When it was toppled, I don't think it's going to help it out, though. Zeus is beaten for me. What an impressive display here by Black Hole, the winner of the very first Robot Wars German Championship. Zeus in real trouble. Dead metal in there, slicing away at the underbelly. The armament is fairly good. Aluminium, polycarbonate. Don't think dead metal can get through. But it matters not one jot because Zeus destroyed by Black Hole. Down goes our very own Warzone Black Hole. The pit of oblivion beckons for Zeus. Counted down by our very own King of the Gods, Refbot. The end is nigh for Zeus. Counted out, the Italian hopes have gone in the European Championships. Zeus finished, Black Hole the winners. And now, it's just left for the robots to finish off. Zeus, the house robots, and Mr. Psycho. That's a Signore Psycho to you, Massimiliano, Gerardo, Zeus. And there's been a crash in the Italian robot wars economy. Oh dear. Dead metal pirouettes. You see, you see the war zone and you die. Leave it at you. say in Germany, the Italians didn't stand a chance, Black Hole go marching on! What can I say? I lose. <laughs> you did lose. <laughs> OK, this is my damage cam. <laughs> Where do you start on a robot like this? Look. Yes. <laughs> and it was on the front there. 
Yes, it's correct. Now I know Black Hole is very good robot. 